Welcome to Spirit Alive. Thank you for watching the program. Uh, if you're brand new to our program, we are Spirit Alive. We're preaching the Word of God across Canada. We thank every one of you that have called and wrote letters to us. Let us know that you enjoy the program. Uh, if you do enjoy the program uh, and uh, you have not, let us know. I would like you to drop us a line or call in our counselors and talk to them, let them know. And we want to know where you're from. And if you tell us about how we can pray for you and your family, we'd love to do that. So hang around and enjoy the program. I believe that you'll be blessed. See you at the end of the program. 23rd Psalm, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In John chapter 10 and verse 14, it says, I am the good shepherd, Jesus said. I know my sheep, and I'm known of mine. First of all, David is writing here in the 23rd Psalm. He said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. So I, I want to talk to you today about our great shepherd, uh, Jesus. And Jesus is the shepherd who provides everything we need in, in this life. We need to come to know him. And so we've been looking at the, the present-day ministry of Jesus last little while, and, and we saw that he's our high priest, our mediator, our intercessor, and now we're looking at Jesus as our shepherd. David here writes about the Lord and identifies Jesus as our shepherd for this day that we're living in. He said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I want to read you a portion of something about David as a shepherd in the uh, Old Testament. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 19, the New Living says, So Saul sent messengers to Jesse. He said, Send me your son, or send your son David, the shepherd boy, or the shepherd. So Saul was having a hard time, and they were looking for somebody to help him out. And they knew that David was a very... Uh, you know, he was a very skilled player, and he played, every time he played, the Bible said the anointing of God came. And he would drive the spirit away from, from the man because the, a, a evil spirit would come and torment Saul, and so they couldn't find release for him, and so he, they brought him. How many people know that music uh, will bless you, especially anointed music? And uh, so Saul calls for David to serve him, then later we see David, basically a savior here, that uh, as a shepherd boy, saving the Israelite army from this great, you know, Goliath, this great monstrous man who is defying the army of God and, and frightening them and causing them to be paralyzed with fear. He said, don't worry about this Philistine. David told Saul, I'll go fight him. Don't be ridiculous, Saul replied, there's no way you can fight this Philistine and possibly win. You're only a boy. Can anybody ever tell you that? Hey, boy. You're a kid, eh? He's been a man of war since his youth. In other words, this guy's really, you know, he, he knows how to fight. He's been practicing for a long time. But David persisted. I've been taking care of my father's sheep and goats. He said, when a lion or a bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club and rescue the lamb from its mouth. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and club it to death. He's a violent man also. He's a, he became an army a guy who can be a, fight, a good fighter. I've done this both to the lion and the bears. I'll do it to this pagan Philistine too, for he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from this Philistine. Saul finally consented, all right, go ahead. And he said, may the Lord be with you. We see here David's heart as a, as a young um, man, uh, a shepherd boy. He was courageous, fearless, confident. And he was willing to lay down his life for those sheep for the little smelly sheep and how much God loves the sheep. And we see here the love of God here displayed in this young man and how he cared 
for the armies of God. And how David cared for the, uh, the, the lambs and the, sh and the goats, the little, little ones. And he cared for them and he rescued them even from the, from the jaws of the lion. That's something else, isn't it? You know, the devil can bite you and kill you to the point where you're almost dead. God will rescue you, the Bible says, from the jaws of death. You know, uh, I mean, we don't like to think about it, but we, you know, we confidently say it right now, but when we get sick, it's another story. Or when someone close to you is sick, you remember how you feel. Like you might be confident right now, yeah, where is he right now? But when, when you know, when it comes to your house, we say, oh, yeah, I'll pray for you, I'll pray for you, then you forget about somebody. But if it's your house, so the story different story because it affects you on the emotional level. So we see the following words of Jesus, our great shepherd, found in John chapter 10, verse 11 and 14 here. Jesus himself identifies, uh, you know, his, his uh, own person as a shepherd. He says, I'm a good shepherd. And he differentiates between what a good shepherd is and someone who's not a shepherd. He said in verse 11, of John chapter 10, right down to verse 14. I'm reading the New Living here. He said, I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd sacrifices his life for his sheep. You know, Jesus became the ultimate sacrifice that bought us our redemption, that made the covenant that could never be broken, that God made with us. God made a covenant. He cut a covenant with you and I through his son Jesus. He didn't do it to any, with anyone else, but he did it with his son so that it would never be broken. So there's a covenant. There's a book full of promises in the Bible that says what belongs to you. And failure to read about those promises will cause you heartache, misery, and defeat if you don't know them. So he says, a hired hand, verse 12, will run and when he sees a wolf coming. He'll abandon the sheep because they don't belong to him and he isn't their shepherd. And so the wolf attacks them and scatters the flock. The hired hand runs because he's working only for money. He doesn't really care about the sheep. I'm the good shepherd. I know my own sheep. And they know me. And I want to tell you something here. I went into ministry. It wasn't because of money. I went in there because there was actually no money in, in, involved. And I said, how could, I don't understand this. How, why am I going to the ministry? There's no money involved. And I had to put away my own dreams to fulfill the call God has called me. And I'm not trying to tell you this to tell you a sob story. I'm just telling you a reality because this is the way it is. I mean, I'm sitting in my home one day. It was Christmas Day. We had no money, uh, nothing to buy, even to buy food, let alone uh, gifts. I'm sitting there. Like, I understand people with, with no money. I grew up with no money. I mean, <laughs> but, but now that I can actually make money, now I'm graduated, I have a master's degree, I can go get a job. That's 30, almost 35, 40 years ago. I can just get a job anywhere I want to go. I can work for the government. I can do work anywhere open doors for me and probably learn how to do a lot of stuff and just, you know, make a living from my wife and I and, and go into the ministry. I mean, can you imagine people telling you, what? You're quitting your educational pursuits and going and work in a church? There's no money in there. In fact, I told my dad one day, I went to visit him on a, uh, you know, go visit my dad every once in a while. I said, no, oh, I got to go back to work. He said, oh, yeah, you got a job? I said, yeah, I'm going to the church. Oh, okay. <laughs> so he didn't see it as a job. Didn't see it as work. And a lot of people have that same perspective. But uh, he says a hired hand only does it for money. I stayed here when there was no money, and now there's some money I still stay. <laughs> <laughs> there's a little bit more money now than before. And I know my kids sacrificed a lot, a lot, a lot. 
people don't realize that when you when you when you pioneer something, you do suffer. Somebody has to suffer. Somebody has to give up something. I've seen people I started out with in ministry, they quit because this happened, that happened. A lot of times you can see research that most pastors quit because of money. I tell you, if you went out right now and started a church, you quit because of money. It's the first thing, <laughs> because there's no money in it. And uh, not only just to meet your needs, but to also to meet the ministry needs. So, and you have to know first if God called you. And sometimes you have to stand long and hard. And Jesus understands this. And uh, he says, uh, a hired hand will run because of money. So, no, we, we serve because uh, I know the pastors here, they come. It's not because we have money, because they, they come because God called them. So, don't give them any more money. <laughs> They're going to work for free. So, no, no you got to live, right? You got to live. So he said, I'm the good shepherd, verse 14. So Jesus laid down his life for us so that he could save us and rescue us from Satan's dominion and Satan's grip and his tyranny. And we see something here in the book of uh, Colossians chapter, um, uh, chapter 1, verse, uh, verses uh, 12 and 13. Here's Paul's letter to the Colossians. This is most important. Note that, you know, like, if you don't understand, if you haven't studied about covenant, I mean, that'll open your eyes to a whole new level about believing God. Covenant. God is tied to you because of the covenant. And, and there's nothing you can do to turn him away that he will never love you. You, could do, you can do a lot of things that will still love you. That doesn't mean he has the license to bless you. He only has license to bless you when you follow his word. And you can't force God to bless you. Hi, everyone. It's Roma Fisher. Thank you for uh, watching the program again. Uh, we thank you for being a friend and a partner. And if you're not a partner, faith partner, we would like you to join us in presenting the gospel across Canada. We get to hear from different ones that are telling us how important the Spirit of Life program is for them and how they've been trained in the Word of God and uh, encouraged. So if you are one of those viewers, we'd like to know where you are and uh, we'd like to hook up with you and pray with you and be a friend and a partner. If you uh, would like to do that, call our um, line and um, our helpline and there'll be somebody there that will talk with you, take your name down. And uh, you can also get a hard copy of our uh, uh, newsletter. Uh, you can go on our Facebook or you can go to our uh, website and find out more about us. So call us, we would like to pray with you. And stick around, we'll be right back at the end of the program and we'll pray with you. The Spirit Alive Helpline is open during Sunday broadcasts. Counselors are available to answer your calls. Call us for prayer support and encouragement. We can also assist with partner services. You can make a donation, sign up for our newsletter, order books and materials to help you grow spiritually. Let us know how the program is helping you. We would love to hear from you. Call us at 807-285-9945. Thank you to our generous partners and volunteers. Together, we're sharing the spirit of faith. Miigwech. Pastor Roma and Anita Fisher invite you to Spirit of Faith Conference hosted by Spirit Alive. Join us for this exciting event Friday, October 20th to Sunday, October 22nd at Faith City Church, 360 Black Bay Road, Thunder Bay, Ontario. With guest ministers from across Canada, Alan and Carol Osu, Fred and Alvina Thunderchild, and worship leaders Sharon and Vern Thomas. Meeting times are Friday and Saturday evenings at 7 p.m., Saturday and Sunday mornings at 10.30 a.m. A fellowship feast will be provided at no cost on Saturday afternoon, and there will be giveaways throughout the weekend. No registration is required, and everyone is welcome. Call 807-344-1956 for more information, or visit spiritalive.org. We're excited to see you October 20th to 22nd at the Spirit of Faith Conference.
And you can't force God to bless you. You know, so, so you have to uh, see uh, the scripture. Here Paul tells the Colossians, he's prayed for them, and he's, he's saying this in verse 12, always thanking the Father, new, new living, Colossians 1, 12, always thanking the Father, he has enabled you to share the inheritance that belongs to his people who live in the light. In other words, people who are walking in the will of God can enjoy the blessings of God. For he has rescued, he not, he's not trying to rescue you from the devil, he has rescued you from the kingdom of darkness. The kingdom of darkness is the devil's kingdom. And sometimes Christians will leave the, the sheepfold, will leave a church or leave the kingdom of God and go into play in the, in the kingdom of darkness and he, they get decimated. The Bible says when a, when a person goes you know, um, leave, leave God, they're in bad shape. Very bad shape. They're worse than they were before. And, and so we, we see this a lot of times. People go out there and they go and do whatever they think. They, they think they're doing their own thing, but they're actually being, because uh, uh, they're in darkness, see? Because it's called the kingdom of darkness because people deceive. They think, oh, I'm, I'm on my own. I'm on my own, man. I'm going to do what I want. But they're not doing what they want. They're doing because the devil is forcing them through fear or whatever it is, pressures, to do something. Isn't it wonderful that we have peace? You could have slept in this morning, but you, you came here because you felt like you needed to be here. Because you felt that I'm going to obey God and my spirit. He has rescued us. Now he's not that he's going to rescue you one day, but sitting here right now, you're already delivered from the kingdom of darkness. In other words, any, anything that Satan planned, you're already rescued. That's why you don't have to pray for a lot of stuff. See, I, I believe it. Here's what it says in the Word. I take it in the name of Jesus. I'm free. I'm free from addictions. I remember, uh, you know, I was going to AA for a number of years. I thank God for AA. I, I just really... If you're having trouble and you can't come to church, then go to AA. You can go to any kind of treatment center. Just go get help. And so I went to AA because Teen Challenge was not available. If it was there, I probably would have went in there, maybe. But I don't think I would have spent a year in there. But I went to every, every day, I went to AA. Okay, so I'm telling my story, okay? So just a little bit. So, one day, I was going to meetings every day. So, I started reading the books and started finding out uh, some things in there that were truth. And one day, it dawned on me, because I had become, in that process of time, and after four or five years, I became a Christian, and realized that, you know what? I'm going to meetings every day because I'm afraid that I might drink again. And I got a revelation, Colossians, that he's delivered me from the power of darkness. That I'm already delivered. So I said, you know what? I'm delivered. And that's why I don't have any problem with anybody going to any kind of treatment centers because the Bible always provided, you're going to find out anyway that you're already delivered. Thank God for that. So one day I realized I was, I was already delivered. I said, hey, I'm delivered. Whether I go to a meeting or not, I'm already delivered. But I went there for, for, for fellowship and, and fun. It helps your soul to go there and talk, uh, talk, you know. And so I go. I still go. I go once in a while. That's because I have to. If I had to, I would go. But I don't have to. I didn't have to come to church this morning, but I'm here because I want to be here. Right? So like you, you're here because you want to be here. So, so according to Colossians 1, 13, that God, uh, through his son Jesus Christ, has already delivered you on the cross. That everything you need was brought into reality through that cross when he took his blood and put it in the uh, heaven. He sealed the covenant, which will never be broken. And every one of your needs is met. When you understand these things, 
It doesn't happen to you automatically. You have to look at it in the scripture and see, this belongs to me. Now, there's Christians who have been born again for years. They don't understand that there's certain things they belong to. They have certain rights. They have to go to someone to get themselves delivered. But when you're a born again, bona fide, mature Christian, you realize that I'm free. The devil, you can't lay hands on me. He says that you're delivered, already been delivered. Everybody say, I'm delivered. Out of the kingdom of darkness. The kingdom of darkness has all this stuff in there that's evil and dark. Anything that's bad is in there, and now you're free right now. So God, through Jesus Christ, has provided for you everything you need in this life. God has provided for you to, to be ensured that nothing will be ever taken away from you. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20 says, Now may the God of peace who brought up from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, has ratified an eternal covenant with his blood. That's what I'm talking about. Jesus took his blood, and that covenant, which provides every single need in your life, can be ensured to you. You have assurance that healing will be provided to you. You have assurance that if you have any problem, mental illness, physical illness, anxiety issues, fears, I was telling you, I told you before, I can tell it again. I had anxiety issues for a number of years, and I'm totally free. I used to have anxiety attacks. My mom used to have them. I had them. But I, don't, I, I quit get having anxiety attacks. I would go, go to the hospital and ask them to give me some uh, medication. But I'm free. Free today. And so you can be free too. And so, so every one of us that God provided for us through Jesus Christ, our shepherd, everything we need. Verse 21 says in Hebrews 13, he'll equip you with all you need for doing his will. You know, the devil will come and attack you in areas to stop you from carrying on with God. He'll, he'll, you know, he'll, God will give you something, but he'll attack you. You attack your car, right? Attack your groceries. He's been attacking groceries a lot lately, I see. And gas. He said, I can't do anything. Uh, I don't have any gas money. No. So he'll attack everything. He'll attack your family. He'll attack your wife. The book of Psalms, Psalm chapter 1, the book of Psalms, and the Psalms uh, mentions Jesus uh, very prophetically in Psalm 22. It mentions his death prophetically. In Psalm 22, it talks about the psalmist saw Jesus dying on the cross and suffering in Psalm 22, prophetically. In the 23rd Psalm, he saw Jesus as our great shepherd who provides all our needs. In Psalm 24, the psalmist saw Jesus coming, you know, coming back to us as the King of kings and Lord of lords. It's not happened yet, but it's coming. Jesus is coming, people. He's coming. I said, Jesus is coming. And everybody, everybody's going to just, you're just, you're just acting up like they're, they, they, there's nothing's going to happen. Jesus said it's going to be just like when Noah, days of Noah, right? The Lord is my shepherd, verse 1, I shall not want. In other words, because you're a shepherd, you'll not lack for anything. You get up in the morning and say, the Lord is my shepherd, I won't lack for anything today. I won't lack for wisdom. I won't lack for money. I thank God today that I'll have all my needs met. I can go to my car and um, go for a drive if I want to. If you'll study this, you'll find out there's a whole pile of things in there that's going to be good for you. He said, I shall not want. Meaning that he's going to meet every single need that you have. 
God, God is watching over you right now. And this Jesus, Philippians 4.19 says, He meets every one of your needs, just like it says in chapter 1, verse 1 of Psalm. That my God shall supply all your needs. Thank you, my partners and friends, for watching the program. Thank you so much. I want to pray with you right now. Listen, if you're watching for the first time or you're watching and you've been watching the program for a while now and you haven't made a decision to follow Jesus, this is an opportunity for you to come to Jesus today. You know, the Bible says you can make peace with God. You can have peace in your heart by inviting Jesus Christ to come into your heart. He'll come right there wherever you are. And uh, years ago, I did that, watching a Billy Graham crusade and invited Jesus and I've never, never, never regretted it. And so I want to afford you this uh, opportunity as uh, many of our partners and friends have done before. So if you pray this prayer right now uh, with me, I'll lead you in prayer. You say what I'm saying and lead you just like I did. Let's go ahead and bow your head right there. Say, Father, thank you for sending Jesus Christ into this world. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. And today I turn away from my sin because I need a savior. I want peace in my life. Lord Jesus, come into my heart, come in my life, save me, I am a sinner. And you said in your word, if I would receive you, I would receive eternal life, salvation. So I thank you today. I invite Jesus and I confess him as my Lord and my savior. And according to your word, I'm born again. Thank you for that opportunity for my salvation. I believe I am now saved according to your word. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer, very simple prayer, you are now born again. You're a child of God. God will help you all the days of your life, and the blessings of God will come to you. And we want to help you from this day forward to help you grow in your uh, faith. We'll send you material. We'll pray with you. We want to disciple you so that you can grow strong and help other people. We'll see you again next time on Spirit Live. God bless every one of you.